Voice chat wheel line. Voice chat wheel. Voice chat wheel line. <laughs> Welcome back to another guide from Joel Isaiah. And I hope you've enjoyed the guide on the TI-10 in-depth tournament predictions. So far, it looks like um, the picks have been a bit unexpected with Tide Hunter being the top. But Monkey King did is indeed rising in popularity. Tiny is indeed one of the most banned heroes, so we will still wait and see. But today what I'd like to share with you is a guide on the fantasy roster and to share with you what are the most important metrics to look out for, how do you decide among the teams to choose from, uh, how do you decide which players to look at and choose from, and also what are some statistics that you can refer to. As you can see on my first day, I did perform pretty well with a 99.9% .9 percentile it, but in fact I could still have done even better. My core selections were good but I could have improved the mid and support selections and I would also explain uh, why this could be improved but before that let me first uh, go through step by step and start off with the important metrics. So among the scoring stats the important metrics to look out for are kills, deaths, tower kills, team fight, observer wards, camp stats, and rune taken. The other stats like uh, first blood or stuns, GPM, Roshan, hits and denies, um, they do not matter as much as they usually give perhaps even less than 10 points and even with the bonuses it does not do as much. But these other stats that I mentioned, such as team fighting, or kills, or tower kills, rune scrap, these are the ones that may give you 20 points, 30 points or more. So for these stats, the most important stat uh, or the signature stats for carry is tower kills, because they are the ones who get farm and push the towers eventually. Even for me, like Abed, he only got 3 points, but Sumio got 24 points in tower kills. Following tower kills, the next most important one on carries probably is death, because they can't afford to die too much. And you can see that they too have higher death uh, points than mid. And then, the although you could think GPM is important, but it's really not because the scoring points is too low. So team fighting is also not bad but it's debatable because carries may not be the ones that are most actively fighting. Um, the next more important one would be kills. So towers, death and kills for carries. For the mid, the no brainer important point would be for uh, rune scrap because they always have the most rune grab. Following that, it would be team fighting. The other metrics like kills and death would matter as well, but uh, team fighting is one of the safer ones after rune scrap. For support, um, observer what's planted is the most important one. Ops are free, and if the game goes long, you can get so much points from ops planted, half a point from each. Camp stats are really valuable as well, but um, Camp stats are usually less than the ops planted, so that's second place. Following ops and camp stats, it would be other metrics like team fighting and stuns. So, but really the most important is just the ops, wards, and camp stats. Overall, team fighting is a good stat to have across different cards, sometimes even the carry card. Kills is a generic one that is good across cores, and then um, Bots planted is generically good across both post 4 and post 5. So how do you then now, let's move to how do you choose the teams. First of all, um, when you are choosing the team, you need to choose based on the tournament schedule and choose a team that first of all will be playing the most games. I've created my own personal spreadsheet to monitor this and the teams that are in yellow are the ones that are going to play uh, at least the most games, so choose among them. But aside from playing the most games, 
they also need to be a team that win majority or even all their games. So first, playing the most games. Second, winning most of their games or all. And the last one would be that these are teams that um, do not end their games too fast but have reasonably long games. And the reason that longer games can be good is because when the game drags late, metrics like GPM go up, what's planted go up, uh, Roshan kills go up, camp stack go up, runes grab go up. So many of these points will be higher if the games are not long, I mean not short. So I this is my own personal spreadsheet where I not where I also predict which teams will win the most game. For me it will be Vichy, followed by Elephant and Secret. I won't share this sheet because I think it's too personal and this is my own predictions. So um, just take note that you can make your own analysis uh, by knowing which teams plays three game, which team will probably win the most, and also which teams will have the longer duration. So this is how you choose a team. So general preference would be V3 followed by Elephant or Secret and then Fnatic. Um, so let's go back to the fantasy roster. How do you choose the players? So usually uh, you choose the players not just based on choosing a player from one of those teams. So for day two, you want to choose from a player from um, Vichy, if not Elephant, Secret and Fnatic. Um, and when you're choosing the player from these teams, um, if you're already unsure, just choose it from the top performing team, which I would say might be Vichy. Um, then the second line of criteria would be to choose the player based on the stat bonuses that you have, as well as whether um, you think that that player will perform well in those stats. So for course, you generally choose a carry over off lane, because carries usually score much higher than off lane, such as true tower kills. So for carry, you want to choose one that has um, that you think will be very farm and will take a lot of towers and that they don't die a lot. Kills matter too. So um, for day one, you could see I choose these two carries and they did indeed kill a lot and died very little and took a lot of towers. For second day, um, among the top carries, um, it will be Poyoyo, Yuyus and Raven. So if you have these three cards, you can choose among them. Then uh, look at the stat bonuses, tower kills, uh, kills and deaths. Yeah. For the mid, you can choose uh, uh, the top performing ones at the moment based on day one. And historical data would be uh, Ori from Vichy and Somnus from Elephant and Trian from Fnatic. That is, I'm talking about choosing these top three based on the teams that have five game, have three games today, so that would be V3, Elephant, Secret, and Fnatic. So that's why I only mentioned some of these uh, mid laners. Um, I will also be sharing this uh, very helpful Reddit guide that I found to you. Um, it's a Reddit guide that tells you the general strategies, historical data for the points for carries, um, historically performing well. Um, players in each row and also which metrics are generally scoring the highest in each row. So aside from this video, you could check this out uh, if you want to. Okay, so coming back, um, my Trian card is good because it has skills, team fights, and runes grab which is the most important. So even though I think that Ori may perform the best generally, I would still choose Trian because I don't think the score difference will be huge and I think that the runes grab bonus is too valuable. So now for support, support generally score the lowest among as you can see. But like I mentioned, um, I could have scored higher for day one if I checked the historically best performing supports and did not purely base the support picks that I have on the better performing teams that I expected. If I were choosing the better performing supports historically, it would have been players like Dubu, um, Kaka, and 
um, so if and players like Dubo and Kakadi perform well and here is where I'll show you the second data set that you can look at fantasy price tracker in this sheet you can be able to track the scores for each player for each day so Mew Knight 4 on the top and you look at support Kaka is the top and then that followed by Dubu um, Moonminder Saksa and or one thing I want to mention here is that even though POS 5 usually score higher than POS 4 not by a huge margin the top 4 performing supports here are from uh, 3 of them are from POS 4 row so this simply means that POS 5 do not always score higher and I think the reason that that is the case is because nowadays observer wards are free and both the POS 4 and POS 5 will plant wards and will stack so you don't necessarily have to choose a POS 5 and you could still consider a POS 4 for your support pick especially if they have bonuses like Ops Ward Planted and Camp Stack this is also a reason why I chose no tier even though he may not be the historically best performing support due to the Ops Ward and Camp Stack bonuses so that said um, when you're choosing support as Ops Ward is the most important metrics followed by Camp Stack if your support have those metrics um, even if they may not be the best performing support in your opinion you may still want to choose the card that has the ox work bonus for me it would be this one with dy and dy did perform among the top um, for supports and i do think b3 will do well today um, then followed by dj was the number one performing support uh, for day one on, in group b and that's because uh, DJ really does a lot as a post file, like planting a lot of bots. Uh, for the more research that can be done, do some on your own as well. Um, but even though my stats for DJ are not great, I'm still choosing DJ because I'm really fairly confident that he will do a lot, like plant a lot of ops and all that. So this is my day two roster, Poyoyo, Urus. Chuan, DY, DJ and like I said for course choose carry over off top performing one probably Poyoyo, Urus and Raven for mid um, choose um, Rune Scrap bonus if you can uh, top performing would be Ori, um, Somnus, Chuan Nisha didn't perform that well on day one just saying to clarify why I didn't put him in the list and then for supports um, BG Gaming supports, uh, Fnatic supports, and Elephant support like FY. So these probably are good ones. Yapzor is good as well, but I don't have a good Yapzor card. So with that, I hope that you find this guide helpful. And uh, if you like even more guides or further roster um, sharing for the other days, let me know. And you can check out the spreadsheet on the red deep guide as well as the top players uh, in my description below hope you like this guide please like it please subscribe and please comment your thoughts and thank you so much for watching